How significant are the Saints moves considering the state of their soft reset? Ladies and gentlemen, in this video, we will be talking about the Saints soft reset. We will also be talking about where former Saints will be moving on to Michael Thomas, Andres Pete. Where will they go in free agency? Where do we see their next teams being? And also, what do we think about Jameis Winston going to the Browns? We will talk about all of that and all of the kind of pieces that are floating out there in free agency for the New Orleans Saints with the gang from New Orleans.Football. Uh, remaining guys that now are free agents for the Saints. There is Andrus Pete, Mike Thomas, Jameis Winston is with the Browns, Zach Bond is with the Eagles, Isaac Yadams a free agent, Lonnie Johnson went to the Texans, Jonathan Abram is is um, still a free agent, Ugo Amadi still a free agent, Malcolm Roach is with uh, the Broncos, Lynn Bowden Jr. Jr. hit free agency. Um, what do we think is going to happen with some of these guys? The Saints have, have reach pay cuts with some of their people. Um, Let me explain this. So what you're looking at right here, first of all, fantastic graphic. The, uh, you know, the New Orleans football gang is really stepping up their graphical capability. So I always, always love to see that. What you're looking at here is the soft reset. And I, I've said it before. The Saints are very transparent with what they're doing. They believe in their core. They believe in the core roster and the core talent that they have with the Alvin Kamara's and Chris Laves and Rashid Shahid's and A.T. Perry's and uh, Derek Carr's and Tyron Matthews and Demario Davis. They believe in that. They believe in what they have there. So the rest of it, they're going to restructure. They're going to offload contracts. They're going to free up some cash. They're going to bring in players that they believe can give them the same amount of value or impact on better deals. And that's going to be the soft reset. We've seen the Saints do it before. They want to get younger. They want to get more talented. It's tricky. It's harder to do because you've got to nail the draft. You've got to nail those free agent signings, which is why I keep saying we cannot judge this Saints offseason until we see the draft. Just like if we would have tried to judge the Saints offseason way back when, before they drafted Michael Thomas or Marshawn Lattimore or Alvin Kamara, or it's impossible. It's impossible to judge them until you see those players. So it's impossible to judge this offseason until we see what we do in the draft and how we fill these positions. If we do go get impact players in the draft on rookie contracts to fill these positions, okay, I'm ready to roll. I, I am not concerned whatsoever about, about losing these guys if we fill those positions. But it is imperative that we do fill the position and nail the draft and get impact players and talent on in the roster on a cheap value, a cheap deal. Um, all this stuff with the money, obviously brought to you by the Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union. The money segment. What do we think happens with these guys um, as we go forward? Let's start with. Let's start with. Uh, let's just go through them one by one. Let's start with Mike Thomas. Well, he's not coming back to New Orleans. Yeah. Um, the receiver market has been a little slow. Calvin Ridley was a big piece just a couple hours before we went on the air today. Um, I think it's going to be more about fit than money with him. Uh, yeah, I agree. I think he, he's obviously a fit fit kind of guy he's obviously you know a team that's that's willing to take the risk and and he serves a very specific role uh i'm really curious i but i think someone's going to get a bargain there I, like i don't think i mean we don't know enough about his yeah, i mean if michael thomas plays if he's healthy and he plays he will absolutely be a bargain medical um but i keep feeling like these injuries aren't automatically related to one another and the first time that guy plays like 14, 15 games in a season, I, I think a team's going to get a steal. If that yeah, I agree with down. that. He's, he's probably going to be helping a playoff contender. That's my prediction yeah. there. I know a little bit about the medical. I th the knee's trying in the right direction. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he's just, I think he's going to take his time. I think, I think there's an awareness that he's got, he's got to get this right. Like, I think, yeah, I think he wants to win. I, I don't, I don't think Michael Thomas is going to take a one year deal to go play, you know, for a bad team. I think he's going to go play for, he's the kind of, He's the kind of piece where he goes to Philadelphia or Kansas City or a team like that, and he helps a he he you know plays a role on a very good team in a very good situation, and and he if he does play 15, 16 games, then he, he will be impactful. I think he knows that he's got to get this right. I think if if I were him, um, I would want to just let the dust settle on a lot of things and just yeah. kind of make sure when I'm making my decision, I'm seeing all the pieces on the chessboard, and then I'm putting my piece where I feel like it, it can do the most damage. And I, I think that's yeah. probably how he's going to play it. I, I don't think we see anything happen here soon. I think he's going to be very, very deliberate with how he goes about his process because, you know, I, I think he, he knows that he was on a prove-it deal last year and, like, he couldn't. Like, yeah. he got hurt and yeah. he couldn't prove it. And I think I think he knows being 
you know, after the last few years, he needs to go somewhere that's elevating him. Yeah. And I think every single time he stepped on the field from probably 2020 on, it was kind of like Mike had to help elevate everybody else. And I think, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of teams like that come to mind, even like a team like Houston, you know, he, where Mike, Mike would be what the, the, he'd be the third receiver, you know, and then it's a good team. He would be helping elevate those guys. And as long as he stays healthy, he, he'd be great in that situation. So, I mean, there's a lot of spots where he could be a really, really good player. No doubt about it. But I agree with Nick. Like, if I'm him, I'm taking my time. I'm taking my time. I'm chilling. And I'm waiting. And I'm going to what I feel like is the best spot for me to win and the best spot for me to to uh, to prove it. He's at a point where it, it would just be smart for him to be in a spot where he's going to go somewhere and he's going to be able to be the absolute best version of whatever he is today. And yeah. Yeah. I think he knows that. I think he's very, very aware of that. Uh, Jameis to the Browns, what do we think about that? Non-factor. Uh, complete, I mean, if we're... <laughs> Are they really about to go? Are we really about to talk about Zach Bond and Isaac Yadam and Lynn Bowden Jr. and Malcolm Roach? I thought it was strange from afar why the Browns wouldn't bring back Joe Flacco. I mean, pretty obvious why the Joe, why uh, pretty obvious why the Browns wouldn't bring back Joe Flacco because the second Deshaun Watson had a bad game, they would be screaming from the rooftops to put Joe Flacco in. Joe Flacco, Joe Flacco performed so well last year, he made it to where they could not bring him back. Because if they bring him back, then Deshaun Watson is under a tremendous amount of pressure. The offense was better with Joe Flacco. So the only way you bring Joe Flacco back if you're the Browns is if you're really considering starting him and you're really considering figuring out, figuring out a way to get out of the Deshaun Watson situation. But there's no possible way you could bring him back. If you bring him back after what he did with that team last year, if Deshaun Watson has a bad game to start the season or if they lose or whatever – it's a miserable experience for everybody involved. You're creating a divisive culture. You're creating, I mean, it's just obvious why they didn't bring him back. I mean, the guy was comeback player of the year <laughs> for them finding him off the street and him leading them to the playoffs. So I have no idea why they didn't want Flacco back. But, I mean, it makes total sense. Um, look, I mean, it's Jameis. Jameis seems excited about it. He deserves a uh, an opportunity somewhere else because he wasn't getting the opportunity here. I don't know how much opportunity he has unless Deshaun Watson is hurt. Um, but unfortunately, the, the supply and demand, I mean, we knew he was probably going to have to take a number two job next year somewhere. But, you know, maybe if he just gets his foot in the door there, it's not over for him. I, you know, I'll always continue to be interested in how his career plays out. But I think we expected a change of scenery. Yeah. Yeah. I think after the last play, uh, we saw Jameis in a, in a Saints uniform. I think we knew the, the change of scenery was, was absolutely the next step. I mean, I, I kind of like it, and I kind of low-key think that that it's a... Uh, I would have went to Minnesota, I think, if I were him. Like, if I were just picking spots yeah. for Jameis. But if he's if he goes to Minnesota, he's the starter. I mean, if he... That, that, that is a big difference there. You know, if he's going to Minnesota, I would think he's going there to be the starting quarterback. He's going there, and that, that that's a Minnesota thing where are they actually looking for a starting quarterback, or do they have a plan to move up in the draft and take their starting quarterback? So that might have an impact on on that as well, and maybe even conversations if James talked to the Vikings of what their plans of the future are. So we, we don't really know there. But, you know, the Browns, I will say, if Deshaun Watson does go down again, if he does get injured and James Winston gets a chance to step in and do his best Joe Flacco impression, could do wonders for his career. If, if, if Winston, if this year, if Winston did what Flacco did last year, yeah, he could probably parlay that into a starting job somewhere. So... You know, there, there are worse places to land after watching what Flacco just did. So I would have been like, man, Minnesota, Justin Jefferson. I like the spot, opportunity to maybe play right away. Like, I, I like it, but I kind of feel like this is a sneaky pick a little bit because, yeah. like, Deshaun misses a lot of time, and yeah, I feel like yeah. they got a good structure there, that big arm in the cold weather. If you're like, the quarterback of the Browns, you can win. Yes, yeah, you just saw sure. Joe Flacco yeah. do it. And I don't. I think them moving on from Joe Flacco tells us about Joe Flacco, like, a little sure. bit. Like, he made it go. I think I mean I I don't want to say I'm right, but I am right. They moved on from Joe Flacco because of the controversy it would create. Oh, but I think Jameis is obviously better than him. Uh, I kind of feel like this was a sneaky smart decision. Yeah. Like at first and like, you're like, man, you behind Deshaun, like but... Minnesota, they might draft JJ McCarthy, and then you're like, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I might get to yeah. start for three weeks, and then they're going to move on from me. But you go somewhere like Cleveland, 
you could do what Andy Dalton did here. I think we made that comparison. Like, I mean, I think like it's so it's so funny how this all works out. But, like, if you look at what what the Raiders gave Gardner Minshew, like I don't think there's very much difference between Gardner Minshew and Jameis. You know, so I think the Browns did get did get a steal. I think Jameis is a viable backup, and he can certainly step in if he needs to be. I think he's better than Sam Darnold. I think he's better than Gardner Minshew. Just some, he's probably better than Jacoby Brissett. Some of the other players we've seen move around this this free agency. So. Like, Andy Dalton came in and said, I'm number two. I'm here to support the starter. But when he got his chance, he didn't give it up. Yeah. Um, it's been quiet around Pete. I think he, he's just got to find out what his market is. And he probably, you know, comes back and, and comes back with an offer. And either they match it or they don't. We've seen that happen with him before. Um, so I think that's probably just how it's going to play out again. I think he just has to find out what his market is. And I don't think it's gotten to that point yet. But him hitting free agency and them taking that dead money hit, yeah, I think is indicative of of their willingness to move on from him. So I think if he yeah. comes back, I think that number's got to be really, 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 really low. The fact yeah. that he got to free agency proves that they weren't desperate to keep him. Yeah, like because yeah. they would have gotten a nice salary cap benefit. By yeah, I mean this is the good old fashioned like calling your bluff. This is this is the like okay if you don't want to pay me I'll go to free agency and they're saying okay go ahead and f- go to free agency and see what the market is and I think. You know, if, if there isn't a market, you lose all your leverage. So that this is another smart decision for the Saints to, to not to not get desperate, to not overextend, to not overpay. You know, trust what you believe the market is, and, and hopefully the market reacts the way you want it to, which as of right now it is. I being able to keep him now, just to try to explain this and not sabotage the show. I mean, he he now this there's thirteen point six million in dead money that hits the Saints cap. It was we were already counting it against their cap. So when we said. They got under the cap. They're still under the cap. We are already counting that. But they could have pushed that into future years. Now they have to absorb it now. Yeah, that makes total sense. Why? Yeah, I mean, again, salary cap stuff. Don't worry about it. We're, we're, we're good cap-wise. Also, big shouts that this video didn't all, didn't go into Zach Bond, Isaac Yadam, Lynn Bowden Jr., Malcolm Roach, Lonnie Johnson Jr., Jonathan Abram, Ugo Amadi. It absolutely blows my mind when I see 24 minute videos not from new Orleans Live football but i see them on other saints <laughs> i see them on other channels uh people who cover the saints it'll be like a 27 minute video and i'm looking at the thumbnail and i'm like who who is that i don't even know who's on the thumbnail and it's like here's a 27 minute breakdown of what i think the willie gay signing means for for the saints it's like how how and how how is that possible i was just sent a video on i think it was 22 minutes long and the conversation was around nathan peterman how is that possible? Like, how are you possibly talking about Nathan Peterman for 25 minutes? I'm not totally sure if Nathan Peterman could talk about Nathan Peterman for 25 minutes. I mean, that, that's a that's shocking. I mean, there's so many there's so many moves that happen that do not matter in free agency, and a lot of the times when you're signing back fourth fourth string receivers and third string running backs and third string quarterbacks and like, ladies and gentlemen, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, I would I would bet. It's controversial. I would bet combined between Nathan Peterman and Jake Hayner, they throw, I'm trying to think of the number. I'll say in the next five years for the New Orleans Saints in the regular season, combined, I bet they throw under The first, the first number in my head is really low. I'll say it. Whatever. I'm not scared. In the next five years, Nathan Peterman and Jake Hayner combined in the regular season will throw less than five and a half passes for the New Orleans Saints. Write that down. That's going to shock a lot of people. There's a lot. I mean, that's going to shock a lot of people. But that's just how it's going to be. I'd be absolutely stunned. Stunned. If Jake Hayner and slash or Nathan Peterman throw more than five passes because it's going it's obvious what it takes it takes a devastating Derek Carr injury that's what it takes and then even if that happens only one of them's playing right and then I mean obviously my my uh my statement would go bust if that happens but I'm based I'm betting against a Derek Carr injury I'm betting against that that's it that's the only way they play and then five you're gonna say oh well what if Derek Carr is not there in five years Nathan Peterman won't be there in five years Jake Hanner won't be there in five years. I'll tell you that. So the five year number is kind of a kind of a smoke and mirrors too. Because Jake Hanner and Nathan Peterman, if they don't throw those five those five passes that I just said 
If they don't throw those in the next two seasons, they're never thrown. Really, they got to kind of throw them this season because they're probably going to be gone. Some other journeyman quarterback will be in next season. So controversial statement by me, but that's what this channel is all about, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you for watching. Go down in the comments below. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next video.